Hello, you're on Pablo Spot. I'm George. Welcome to a new episode on this series on exploring GitOps using Atlantis. And today, I will be transitioning from a local setup to running everything using containers. And so if this series and the content of this channel lines up with your interests, hit the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning by doing. So, let's start coding. On the two earlier episodes on this series, I have shown you how to set up Atlantis on my local machine. In today's episode, I will be exploring the setup using Docker containers. I'm still going to use ng-rock to allow my Atlantis service to be accessible through the internet, but I will be running both ng-rock and Atlantis using Docker containers. I will start by creating my Docker Compose configuration file in the root of my repository. I will need two services, one for my Atlantis and another one for my ng-rock proxy. I'll start sussing out the settings for my ng-rock service since it is the simplest out of the two. The first property that I will define inside this service is the image. And then the environment variables. There's only one environment variable required for my ng-rock setup and that is my ng-rock auth token. Exposing the port of my ng-rock service is not necessary, but I need to be able to pull out the generated forwarding URL later on. ng-rock runs on port 4040 by default, so I'll expose this on my local host. And lastly, I will add an override to the command property and set the right parameters to pass when starting my ng-rock service. On this command override, the Atlantis represents the host that I'm trying to proxy access from the internet, and 4141 is the port it is running on. In order for the proxy to be properly set, I will need to set the name of the Atlantis service to what I use inside this command, which in this case is Atlantis. This Atlantis service needs an image property, which I'll point to an official Atlantis Docker image. And then the next property that I need to set inside the Atlantis service is the environment. To set all the environment variables that I need, what I can do is head to my start Atlantis shell script, and then I will copy all these parameter switches that I used for my local instance. And then head back to my Docker Compose file and paste this in. And then I'm going to get rid of all the unnecessary strings such that each parameter switch has its own line. And then I will replace all the double dash in front of each parameter with Atlantis. And then replace all the dashes with underscore. And then I'm going to select all these lines and then press Control Shift P. If you're using Mac, the key is Command P. And then in here, I'm going to start typing uppercase and then select that and then add dash before each environment variable. Remember my Atlantis.var file? This is where I defined all my local variables. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this file and rename the copy version to .env.local. And then I will replace each variable entry on this file to match what I defined in the environment variable section inside my Atlantis service on the Docker Compose file. I don't want this file to be added in my Git repository, so I'm going to update my Git ignore and add that file. And now back to my Docker Compose file. I need to be able to run Terraform on AWS inside my Atlantis container. And so I'll add three more environment variables related to AWS. And because I need my Atlantis container to have access to my configuration files, along with some runcom files in my home directory on my local machine, I will add volume mapping. Notice that the volume mapping reference has a directory called config. This does not exist yet, so let me go ahead and create that directory. And what I will do is move my repos YAML and Atlantis YAML into this new directory. Which also means I need to make some modifications inside my repos that YAML file. And the pre-workflow command should now reference the location of my Atlantis YAML file inside the Atlantis container. And because I moved the location of my repos that YAML file, I need to update the value that I set for the corresponding environment variable inside my environment file. This change tells Atlantis service to look for the repos the YAML file in the config directory inside the Atlantis container. I'm also using the main Atlantis Docker image as a base image, which means Teragrant is not installed. And so on my Atlantis YAML file, I will change the workflow name on this existing block from Teragrant to PLC. 
I'm using Terraform Cloud for my backend, which means I need to find a way to inject my Terraform Runcom file into the container. When Atlantis container starts, it will create a default Terraform Runcom file inside the container, which means setting a volume mapping to the container will not work because this will be overwritten by the default version that Atlantis creates upon startup. So what I will do is head to my VS Code terminal and I will copy my Terraform Runcom file into my config directory. And now back to my VS Code Explorer. And I now have my Terraform Runcom file inside the config directory. I should not commit this sensitive file into my Git repository, so I'll update my git ignore file and add Terraform RC. What I will do next is head to my repos.yaml and update my pre-workflow hooks. Apart from copying my generic Atlantis YAML file to the right location, I will also copy my Terraform Runcom file to the home directory inside the container. What this new command will do is, before a workflow is run, it will copy the correct Terraform RC file into the home directory inside the container. Now let me head back to my VS Code terminal. I will first export my ngrock auth token and then initialize my AWS credentials by running AWS Vault. And then run docker compose command to start my services. When I do this, I need to pass my variable file by adding end file parameter switch into the command. Both ngrock and Atlantis services are now up, but I need to make sure that my ngrock talks to my Atlantis service property. So what I will do is head to my browser and then access my ngrock service on my local host on port 4040. This page provides me with the forwarding URL for ngrock, which is right here. So I'm going to copy that URL and then head to my GitHub account and then access my single sign-on infrastructure repository, head to settings and on webhooks, I will edit this existing webhook and update the payload URL with the ngrock forwarding URL. Remember to keep the slash events at the end of the URL to make sure this will work. And then at the end of this page, update webhook. And then let me switch back to my VS Code session. And then on my environment local file, I also need to update the Atlantis URL environment variable with the ngrock forwarding URL. And then on my VS Code terminal, I will let this session run on its own. So I'll open a new terminal session. And because I changed an Atlantis environment variable, I need to restart just the Atlantis service. And so I will run this command. And if I switch to the other terminal session, I can tell that the Atlantis service has been restarted successfully because of the different color in the console log. So let's make this setup do some work. Let me switch VS Code session and make some changes on my single sign-on infrastructure repository. So I've created a new branch for today's changes. So let me head to my VS Code Explorer. And then I'm going to reinstate the POC TFRs inside the TFRs directory. And then let me switch back to my VS Code terminal session and commit my changes. And then I'm going to push my changes to my remote origin. And now that that's pushed, let me switch to my browser. And then I'm going to raise a pull request for my changes. And notice that steps are automatically run as part of my pull request checks. This is GitHub triggering an infrastructure plan automatically and calling my Atlantis instance to start running the process. The plan process is complete. And notice the comment that has been added automatically to this pull request. This comment shows the output of the run and some suggestions on what to do next. Now let me go ahead and apply this. So on the comment section at the end of this page, I'm going to type Atlantis apply -p POC and push that comment through. Notice that the apply step added a few more checks on this pull request. The apply process is complete and a new comment is also added to the pull request showing the result of the apply. And that's all I have for today. Stay tuned as I continue to explore setting up GitOps process using Atlantis. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content on this channel. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe. See ya.